Greetings and nights, it is I, Sir Burrow. So here and today, we're here with more Doki Doki Literature Club. It's episode two. Haven't seen anything creepy yet, except for some of Sayori's interests, as seen by the the words that were chosen in last night's poem. Maybe we'll get a few more of those tonight, but who knows? Either way, we're moving on to the next day. We're about to write our next poem. Gotta finish talking with Sayori first. I don't know. Hang on, I gotta move my mic. Pop! There it's moved. All right. Now, without any further ado, let's get a reading. <laughs> it's funny because I already just said the same thing. <laughs> Every day is gonna be so much fun. <sighs> Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. Alright, time to go write Yuri a poem. Okay, disaster, pleasure, sugar, universe, incongruent, dark, melancholy, meager, flying, rainbow. She would probably like the word melancholy. Yeah! Lust, dazzle, romance, judgment, existence, variance, entropy, dance, crimson, and determination. Um... Let's try existence. Yeah! Ambient, color, imagination, disoriented, heaven scent, chocolate, summer, ocean, pout, and sheer. Ambient. Yeah, I've gotten three out of three out of twenty. Yeah, because it's number four. Fantasy, analysis, extreme, sweet, vibrant, intellectual, sadness, rain cloud, suicide, and comfort. Let's do intellectual. Yeah, whirlwind, shopping, bubbles, fickle, email, raindrops, silly, candy, despise, question. Let's try raindrops. Yeah, fester, alone, laugh, passion, adventure, cry, misery, clouds, flower, mouse. Let's try alone. How does she like being alone? I don't know. Sayori's answers confuse me. Skipping, Valentine, Peaceful, Boop, Doki Doki, Ribbon, Sunset, Uncontrollable, Secretive, and Portrait. Let's try Secretive. No, Peaceful. Peaceful. How do you- Mmm, Sayori. Tragedy, Friends, Essence, Waterfall, Shame, Hope, Forgive, Climax, Love, and Grief. Hmm, let's try Grief. How do you- Freak you freak, Sayori! You freak you freak! Gah! Calm, bouncy, daydream, unrestrained, infallible, unstable, inferno, explode, graveyard, pink. Let's try calm. What the balls, dude? Sayori, you freaky freak! Beauty, kitty, poof, holiday, nature, lollipop, puppy, incapable, incapable, fear, and disarray. She likes horror books, so let's try fear. What the? I'm freaking done with Sayori, man. I'm sick of it. Anger, tears, sensation, awesome, marriage, afterimage, jump, infulgent, hopeless, and time. What does the word effulgent mean? I gotta Google that. I don't know what effulgent means. I feel like effulgent might be the one, though. I just got this feeling in my soul, dude. Shining brightly, radiant. No, not effulgent. Um, so let's try... Tears? What the heck, Sayori? God! Vivacious kiss, spinning, philosophy, fun, sticky, whisper, amazing, insight, bliss. Philosophy. Yes, okay. Back on track. Hair, marshmallow, rose, fireworks, defeat, embrace, anxiety, swimsuit, music, cheeks. Um, hmm. Defeat? What the balls? Scars, excitement, lucky, uncanny, precious, vivid, twirl, bunny, unending, party. Uncanny? Yes, okay. Mmm. Horror, anime, frightening, death, vertigo, shiny, warm, promise, vitality, happiness, horror. Yeah. Melody, depression, broken, lazy, sparkle, pain, disown, unrequited, hop, and empty. Unrequited? <laughs> Vanilla, peace, skirt, agonizing, atone, special, giggle, smile, play, dream. Agonizing? Okay. Socks, contamination, together, fluffy, strawberry, electricity, massacre, nightgown, cute, landscape. Let's try massacre, because she likes horror books. Good. Extraordinary, kawaii, milk, cage, treasure, wonderful, joy, loud, childhood, sing. Cage? Good. Clumsy, pure, vacation, aura, whistle, breathe, desire, heart, flee, and heartbeat. Heartbeat, maybe? Aura. Yeah! Okay, I think I got enough for, uh, for Yuri. 
Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual theme greets me. Hi, Braille Buns! Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Huh? Th that's not like you at all! I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? At your purse? Uh, money! Eh? Why that, all of a sudden? <laughs> no reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. <laughs> Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I knew you were a cheap I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. <laughs> so that leaves only one option. Aww, I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Huh? Oh, that was me. I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Uh, huh? Uh, I, I wasn't listening or anything. It, it was just something in my book. Oh. Yuri. Tell Brombuns to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides... You should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Ah, uh, uh, did I just... Oh, I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Uh. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. <laughs> Retribution. That. Still, coming from you, Sayori? I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> anime laugh. Can't do an anime laugh. Can't do it at all. Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. <laughs> but... but you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Plap! Plap! Oh no, Natsuki's gonna be mad. Cool! I don't know where something smacks Sayori in the face and she tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... Uh, uh, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. I is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution! <laughs> Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> Freaking Natsuki. I was, I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> N Natsuki, that's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it! Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good! <laughs> Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue! <laughs> You're gonna- th wait, what? You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Aw, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez! Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do I think you gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> God, I hate anime laughs. Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Oh, jeez! I get it, I get it! Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Um. 
Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Sayori! God dang it! Hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> She's evil! Hater. Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Huh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Huh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more the desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. <laughs> sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Huh? Monica shows the club of her boyfriend after all. He's so strong-willed. boyfriend What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, never mind that. What held you up, anyway? Ah, uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. <laughs> I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case... I won't let you down, bro buns. Why is everyone doing it for me? It's so weird! Monica smiles sweetly. Ah. I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Hang on. Smelly boy knocking on doors and being loud. <sighs> Looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet to read her manga. Hey, Yuri. <laughs> huh? Ah. I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Ah, no. I was kind of just waiting for you. Ah, well if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's... Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small pitcher from the shelf, the kind with the filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Ah, I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm, where are you two off to? Uh, we're just... <laughs> Yuri's gonna make some tea, so... Uh... I suddenly realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Monica, please, mind your own business for once. Oh! Yuri! Bring in the heat! What do you want to me... Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve bro buns in club activities? Huh? She's bringing the freaking heat, dude! Burn! My mouth gapes. Hey, I, I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Hmm. Then let's go, bro buns. Ah. Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. Man. <laughs> Yuri. 
That was out of character. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. <laughs> I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri. I just... Something about the way she said that made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but it's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Robuns, how come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because nothing that you do is bad as you- wait, is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Uh, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Ah, um... <laughs> Yuri lifts her head. Bro Buns, I really like being friends with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway... Ah, uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Aw, oh, she's so cute. Robuns, do you like oolong tea? Uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature in the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? <laughs> in that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. <laughs> I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out that it's not very hard for me to do. When it's with you who's around, anyway. When it's you who's around. Ah, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, bro buns. It's very endearing. <laughs> That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Bro Buns, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Huh? Why's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry. I didn't realize. No worries. I just have a back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... Ah... Uh... <laughs> my Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading? Yes. <laughs> I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. <laughs> reading posture, okay, fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieve the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. I take it since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the reading position as last time. The same reading position, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Huh? Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this, man? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle! Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. <laughs> Meanwhile, has Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. Unless she did, and she's hiding it, because she's a genius. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little bit. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, uh, that's... that's okay. I won't take any. Huh? Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. <laughs> Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate, and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips, as if this situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here! Gah! <laughs> I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Ugh! Huh? 
Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um... Throw buns? Sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Ah, uh, that's... Well... You were just helping. That's something that friends do. Right? Uh, I mean... Not really in this kind of context, but... Yeah? That's all it was. Yeah. Then... You don't need to stop or anything. Ah! I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell just by her expression that she, even she can't focus now. God, I can't read. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. I raise my arm. Uh. Like before, Yuri parts her lips, but... It's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. <laughs> what the crap just happened? What happened? Okay, everyone. Huh? Uh-huh. Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. Bro Buns, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Y yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. I'll, I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. <laughs> what happened here? Oh my god. Okay. Let's do it the same order as last time. Yuri, Sayori, Natsuki, Monica. <coughs> Let's see what you've written for today. Mm. Mm. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Robuns? This one might be even better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. <sighs> I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Ooh, that's surprising. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Uh. Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Does she not have any friends, maybe? Maybe you should think about what you say, bro buns, before you freaking say it! Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah. I do. If it's with you. <laughs> oh, she's so cute, I love her. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed strange, my strange tendencies as an, an ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon is... F <laughs> well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was a symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The noon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. God, why can't I read this? The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Ooh. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well... I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. 
Why do you keep them to yourself? Be because they're embarrassing. And people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, bro buns? Well... <laughs> and I... Bro buns words, not mine. Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. Hi. I might be ranting a little bit now. But I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Ah! Writing, listening. There really aren't many people like you, bro buns. That's exaggerating. A little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It's, it's nothing, really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her, tib her timidness seems to disappear. Just like my ability to speak properly seems to disappear. Alright, Sayori time! Huddle! Hmm. Ooh. I like this one, bro buns. It has some nice feelings in it. Ah, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. <laughs> I guess I like them both. <laughs> Anime laugh. Hate them! That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go to my heart. Go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Aw, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Huh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems, too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem could give the rain cloud a little hug. And make a nice happy rainbow. <laughs> Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Huh? It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, bro buns. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I should read it in her voice, huh? I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. I put And I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles, all in a row. My collection, my collection makes me lots of friends, each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. So down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time's elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up, and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be my, for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Ugh. Hmm. Strange. Holy crap! Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to be being cheerful. Well, never mind. I I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. 
It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! I'm gonna keep writing until I die! <laughs> so get out of yourself. So I always saw you had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times, or if she'll stay passionate about it forever. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Interesting. Freaking Natsuki! Hmm. Well, I can admit that it's better than the last one. It's nice to see that you're putting in some effort. That's good. But I still don't like this at all. It's trying too hard to be serious. Huh? What do you mean by that? Poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express something. It's going to just sound like you're forcing it unless you really don't suck at it. Honestly, don't bother trying to write poems like this until you're on Yuri's level. Natsuki stopped short all of a sudden. D don't tell me. Huh? You're not- you're not just trying to impress Yuri, are you? What are you talking about? And keep your voice down. You know Yuri would love this kind of- this angsty- Just because she's a talented writer doesn't mean- I- I mean- Ugh! Looks like I'm in trouble. <sighs> Someone else struck a nerve, but what I did is beyond me. <sighs> it's pretty obvious, Rovans. It's pretty obvious. I am so done with you. Natsuki shoves the poem I handed her back over to me. Take your stupid poem. If you wrote it for someone else, just don't show it to me. Ouch. This is what I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. Unless I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. I didn't even get to read Natsuki's poem! <laughs> I wanted to read Natsuki's poem, though. I like her writing style just fine. Hi again, Brobuns. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. Not ever. You never know. Wanna share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Hmm. Alright. This one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm. I guess so. <laughs> you can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most, uh, romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature. It's like a light turns on inside her. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what's going on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mind- uh, mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just mean that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that. You must be pretty into her. <gasps> NANI?! You completely misunderstood. <laughs> Calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but, well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh well, I know. I was just saying, but anyway. Blizzard! Get out of here! I don't want to play Overwatch right now! It's the only game I have on Blizzard. Sorry. <laughs> you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust, an endless poem of meaningless. Load me. What? Huh? Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way that I write. I'm so ha I'm sorry if you don't like it. I'm so happy you don't like it. What the heck? No! <laughs> no, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as the physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. 
When that happens, don't forget to save your game. <laughs> Bop. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? <laughs> what am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. <gasps> okay, it seems like something's approaching. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned for today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. <sighs> do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, oh, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? P <laughs> there you know. Um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it on, putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Huh? Well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with this, Natsuki. <laughs> with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. <laughs> <laughs> Choking! Remembering that, remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until uh, just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. Hmm. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then we'll inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. <laughs> oh. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. Guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... Ugh. It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine! I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! That was not her voice, but I'm moving on, because I don't want to yell out an alright in a very cheerful manner. <sighs> Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Mm -hmm. Yuri dejectively glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I... I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> well, that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N no way. Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <clears throat> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. And finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. <laughs> Woo! Clapping! Happy days! Monica takes a breath and smiles. 
That was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. Uh, Yuri's all fired up all of a sudden! Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Sayori! Wait, Sayori, no, that's Sayori, stop! Yuri, it's, it's called... After image of a crimson eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the shaped syllables, the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her. Wait, what? No. No, we were so caught- we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Oh. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay! I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reading it to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror, or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori's. It's serene and bittersweet. Wait, like Sayori is. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get her it's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes, and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. Even Brobuns liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Huh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's... well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay! Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Brobuns. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyways. Might as well let Brobuns lower everyone's standards a little bit before I have to do it. Screw you, sir! <laughs> Freaking duh! Hate it. Natsuki! It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyways. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. But don't worry about it too much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. How'd you read my mind? Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Ah, uh, well... Blech. Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. 
It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. Natsuki said nothing. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Wait, no, that was me. Ah! Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. it must be a little nice, though. Well, <laughs> how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, bro buns, you don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I want to get out of this awkward situation! I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already happened. Wait, have already changed! Gah! Can't read. I also need a drink of freaking water, bro. Man! Water is good for the soul and the voice! It doesn't talk a lot! Ah! Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori's being a little quieter than usual on the way home. I have water in my beard, don't I? Yes, I did. Don't know if the capture caught it, though. Hey, Sayori. Huh? Sorry, I was spacing out. Ha, <laughs> no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean, Sayori fumbles with words. Just like me. It's exactly like me. So, let's just say that one day Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You kind of put me on the spot here. <laughs> I would walk home with Yuri. I would w still walk home with Sayori. I would walk home with Yuri, dude. Walking home with Yuri, huh? What if the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said! <laughs> you admitted it. Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Wait, everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question! I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what'll happen in that time? Nothing or everything. One or the other. Frightening, headphones, candy, massacre, ribbon, jump, lollipop, starscape, color, breathe. Frightening. Yeah! Bubbles, excitement, fun, aura, memories, covet, death, laughs, tenacious, pain. Aura? Yeah! Fear, summer, disoriented, agonizing, peace, a tone, incapable, whisper, judgment, landscape. Fear? Freaking crap, I always forget the fear. Insight, forgive, lust, peaceful, lucky, poof, family, defeat, despise, contamination. Insight? Yeah! Disown, scars, grief, love, milk, vitality, promise, charm, sensation, and dance. <sighs> sensation? Yeah! Heartbeat, vertigo, entropy, determination, vivid, flying, shiny, elect intellectual, daydreamer, prayer, intellectual. Comfort, wrath, crimson, fickle, extreme, clouds, nature, ambient, extraordinary, rose. Let's try ambient. Yeah! Eternity, bouncy, flea, pre pleasure, sunset, friends, childhood, embrace, inferno, and sparkle. Man, I can't read today. Um, let's try flea. Yeah! Bliss, romance, philosophy, valentine, fester, party, melancholy, horror, question, pout, horror, yeah! Uncanny, sugar, kawaii, skirt, doki doki, chocolate, dream, skipping, strawberry, tragedy. Let's try... Uncanny. Portrait, variance, waterfall, warm, secretive, dark, joy, sweet, raindrops, vibrant. Dark. Butts! 
Sadness, Time, Boop, Fireworks, Anger, Melody, Sunny, Twirl, Pure, Shame. Sadness? I forgot! Dang it, she likes sadness. Analysis, Jumpy, Calm, Flower, Meager, Giggle, After Image, Mouth, Funny, Fluffy. Mm, analysis? Yeah! Socks, Unstable, Vacation, Uncontrollable, Bed, Disaster, Essence, Marriage, Empty, Spinning. Disaster? No, Unstable. Yeah! yeah. Infinite, Swimsuit, Dazzle, Disarray, Hop, Desire, Imagination, Heaven Sent, Existence, and Games. Infinite? Yeah! Awesome, Email, Lipstick, Parfait, Anxiety, Playground, Tears, Sticky, Incongruent, and Beauty. I'm curious, what does incongruent mean? I forget. I know I've heard that word before. I've used it before. I can't remember what it means, though. Meeting together. Okay. Um, so let's try... Incongruent. Yeah! Graveyard together, nibble, electricity, misfortune, nightgown, holiday, infallible, vivacious, and rainbow. Graveyard, horror. Yeah! Fireflies, lazy, kiss, happiness, amazing, special, cage, treasure, blanket, and hopeless. Hopeless? <gasps> what? Duh. We're always gonna find out some weird stuff about Sayori during these, aren't we? Don't trust you. Whistle, alone, suicide, smile, climax, sing, play, cry, rain cloud, hurt. Let's try hurt, because it's a horror thingy. What? Depression, universe, heart, music, hope, wonderful, broken, vanilla, whirlwind, unrestrained. Let's try unrestrained. Yeah! Okay, I think I got enough for, uh, for Yuri. Oh, man. Oh, man, what, Monica? I don't know. You might know. But even if you don't... Sorry. You'll find out next episode. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's the end for this episode. I gotta get ready to go. Uh, it's about time for me to get in the car and leave with the family. Sorry about that. Ain't got nothing for it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. I enjoy recording it. It's a lot of fun, actually. I still haven't seen any of the horror stuff. I know it transforms into something dark later on, but I don't know. Hopefully we'll see that in the next episode. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and let me know down below that you want to see more, because if you let me know, I'll get it to you faster. It's just how the world works. Um, but yeah, I don't have anything else to say, so until next time we meet, farewell. Love me, Yuri!